All right, guys, I'm taking the Okai. I'm gonna be taking it to work and I'm gonna see how it is to commute. Let's get on it and go. But before we do that, we got our NFC key right here. Boom, it pops up, we are good to go. I switched to a white mode, so hopefully you guys can see that, and then we'll switch to the black mode later at night so you guys can see the screen during the day and then at nighttime. So check this out. Assist number one, 42 miles. Assist number two, it says we're gonna get roughly 36 miles. Assist number three says we get roughly 29 miles. So we should be good to go back and forth to work. It's only 12 miles, so won't be too bad. All right, so we are, we are on the way. Look how they painted these lines. We actually got painted bicycle lines. You can see them now. Super nice. Well, actually they didn't do this one. I wonder why they didn't do this one, that's weird. If you guys watched the video review when I uh, did this bike not too long ago, a couple days ago, um, you would have saw that this bike only does 20 miles per hour. I would honestly be taking this bike probably more than a lot of my other electric bikes because it's so cool looking if it did 28 miles per hour. Now it has a 750 watt motor in the back with a peak of a thousand watts and it's a buffet motor. Those motors are capable of going, I think even over 30. So I'm a little lost on why they limited it to 20. Um, I said it in my review that I don't know if it's because of regulations on where they want to sell it and they want to keep it at a, cl a class two because uh, if it goes any faster than 20 on throttle, then it goes into a different class and then I don't know if they need licensing. I don't know how all that works on the company's end, but yeah, I just wanted to go faster. But the good thing is we can use a throttle to get to 20. We don't have to pedal whatsoever compared to the other bike I brought the other day. Man, taking the Avadar, man, that bike beat my ass. At least I can sit back and relax on this bike and let people check out the nice, beautiful frame color that's on here. And coming up, it's gonna take a while to get there, but um, there's gonna be an overpass we gotta go up. I'm very curious if this bike is just gonna stay and hold 20 miles per hour, because it has the power to stay and hold at 20 miles per hour up an overpass, like it should. I don't see this bike dipping down into like 15 miles per hour or anything like that. It's not a big hill, just a regular overpass going over uh, some railroad track, so. We'll see what happens. And real quick, before I even talk so much more about this bike, I wanna let you guys know that this is a prototype bike. There's some stuff that's wrong with it, but it's also stuff that they knew and that they were doing firmware upgrades on it and you know adjusting some stuff. I already told them everything that I saw on the bike and they said most of it has already been fixed. They said there was one issue that they were working on and all that stuff, but. Basically, it was the interface of this. Once you change the interface from white to a black interface, for some odd reason, what would happen is the language would change to uh, Chinese, and then you gotta go into the phone, change the uh, language back to English. You had to do that every single time, which was very, very weird. But other than that, um, all the other stuff I showed them, like the headlight was, uh, mine was installed backwards, and it wasn't my fault. It was the actual headlight itself it was put on the mounting. It's like a uh, GoPro mount almost. It was put on that GoPro mount backwards. So it limited the travel of my headlight and it wouldn't go so far down. So it was pointed hella far up. So I fixed that. So we're good on the night footage. I like that they have it up here. Um, it's nice because think about it, when you're riding and for whatever reason, let's see you hit a big uh, bump or something like that and your headlight moves and it's way down on the fender. It is nice that it's up here so you guys can adjust it whenever you guys want. I did bring a backup headlight. Um, I'll try to put it on later. We'll put it on the handlebars just so you guys can see the difference between the stock light and buying like a $40 aftermarket one that you can install on your handlebars. Like if you want, you don't really have to. It's just something you can do. I like doing them to all my electric bikes just because I want to see the best possible view in front of me so I don't run anything over. Another thing, uh, just a note, it has a very slight delay. It's only maybe like a half second delay as soon as you hit the throttle where it actually starts moving. I just wanted to uh, point that out like for you guys so you guys know that. Another thing I wanna talk on this bike is that uh, you have to install the front wheel. Just be careful. Um, I installed the front wheel. I thought I did it perfectly fine. I mean, I didn't get a uh, socket out because it is a uh, quick release. So I just tightened one side of it by hand and then pushed the other one together. I guess 
it wasn't tight enough so make sure you really snug that down make sure it's really on there because when i was doing my brake test on my reviews it actually uh, came loose and all the riding on the side of the wheel is all messed up because it was rubbing against the forks so be on the safe side double check when you install the front wheel you don't want to have my problem but so far nice bike to ride me and my girl actually uh, rode this bike with the Ingway bike the other day and we went to the 99 uh, overpass and they're they're basically they're making a uh, overpass over the freeway and we were just messing around over there in the dirt and whatnot and going from the Ingway and then coming to this bike especially after riding the Avidar dude this bike feels solid it feels like a tank 100% feels like a tank it feels so weird like it feels so like the suspension doesn't feel stiff the bike itself feels stiff if that makes any sense like it feels like a hefty bike it's not heavy i think it's about uh 60 pounds if i'm not mistaken but it just feels like solid on the road when i was uh riding the ingway the ingway has front suspension uh front and back and the suspension is very soft or the way i had it set up on the preload so any type of movement you can hear the front suspension like psh, psh, you can hear the air coming out of them it felt really uh bouncy but it felt comfortable and then when i got on this thing slightly rougher but it felt more in control because it felt more like planted on the ground feels like you're on a hummer i guess driving a hummer i guess that's the perfect thing i could say like turning is okay but it's not going to be the best but at the same time with these tires it's very comfortable and if you guys are thinking about buying one of these they are right under two thousand dollars they should already be out um, they got released on july 20th hopefully they did not get pushed back because i am making this video right before they get released but it, the video is probably going to go out after the fact if anything happens i'll put it in the description and if the company for whatever reason hits me up and tells me how to get into the advanced settings and change it to go faster I'll be taking it to work again and making another video on it for sure. 20 is a great cruising speed, but I'm so used to going faster. One cool feature that I think this bike would benefit from also, since it's kind of uh, like futuristic looking, stuff like NFC has been around for a while. You know, all the scooters and stuff that get ridden, I think that goes off of uh, NFC and all that. So it's not like it's super new. It's just a lot of bikes don't have an integrated display. They don't have this like, headset looking stem thing that's like built in and like swivels around the body of the frame it's super dope i feel like they should have put cruise control on this bike with everything else that it has or give you the option to turn it like on and off you might notice too if uh you watch the videos every single day that i am not wearing my gloves today it's it's a 20 mile an hour bike i didn't really feel like i needed them i should be okay if anything happens um, but i was also trying to get a feel for these grips so they're uh, locking grips and all you do is loosen one screw most uh, locking ones are like two screws there's one on the end and one right here um one screw is fine they're not moving at all i wanted to see if my palm because it's made the form fit your hand i wanted to see if it was uh right before adding the gloves and it feels perfectly fine i do feel like i want to move the throttle a little tiny bit more down so my hand or my thumb is more underneath the the bars instead of being so high but for the most part feels good and then i move the shifter over slightly because this little arm right here was hitting my thumb or rubbing up against it because of the way uh the grip sits so i just moved that slightly over it fixed that problem no complaints all right so we're gonna be coming up this hill and let's see exactly like how it does so let's see i'm a bike lady <laughs> you don't need to look at me like i'm crazy um all right so we're coming up this hill doing 19 miles per hour so we did drop one mile per hour 18 19 20. i didn't feel like it was struggling at all so i mean it did pretty good no complaints there you don't feel like the motor was struggling at all because on some bikes you can actually hear the motor struggling to get uphill and you just start losing mile per hour little by little so if you had to get up something that was insanely just inclining inclining for like a mile um sometimes you know bikes wouldn't make it up this thing should make it up perfectly fine now we're getting some speed out of the bike 24 miles per hour that's what i'm talking about but yeah you see how it goes right back down it's literally it cut all my power 
there we go now i can hear the motor working yeah it cut my power down until it got down to 20. so eh. but i will say this is the perfect cruising bike i mean commuter whatever you want to use it for it is very comfortable it is very solid it looks the part i mean it that's one of my favorite things about it is how it looks i love it the nsc thing is cool that that's how you turn it on and you could also turn it on with your phone and the only odd thing is, is you could turn it on with this this little uh thing right here the buttons underneath the plus and minus button so i'm wondering why they put that if you can turn it on two other ways but very nice bike to get to work now you got to see it at night so give me a little bit i gotta work for a few hours and then we'll be back on it jesus christ man i get one every week what do you mean you get one every week all right let's see who's here i want to show this bike off to so my co-workers let me get the light on real quick oh man where is everybody matt and off yeah damn it i had a bike to show them all right let's get on the way nine hours down of working let's go see that's how it looks you see it? That looks mean. And then look, it turns on. That and then. Looks mean. And then this lights up, whatever color you want it. So where's the motor? Right there in the back. Electric. All right, let's get out of here. And before I even go any farther, I realized that we need to turn on our lights in the back. Just realized that. So let me show you really quick, because that's what I was last talking about when we ended our ride. So check this out. Look how bright this light is. That's pretty cool. But uh, let's come down here. Um, this is the stock light right here that it comes with. And then I have this extra one. You can definitely see the brightness difference between these lights. So anyways, so now I should be able to be seen a little bit behind me. So now what I'm noticing is that now that I have the seat higher so people can see my tail lights or basically my seat post lights because that's the only place I can figure out where to put a rear light on. And obviously the factory one goes underneath the seat anyway is now I'm kind of on my tippy toes because it's so much higher. I like when the seat was a lot much lower, but safety is my main concern on these bikes. So I'll take the bike sitting a little bit higher and being a little bit more racer style, like leaned over with my back um, than someone not seeing me while I'm in the bike lane coming up to me. And uh, if you guys noticed when I was sitting there at the light that I do have an aftermarket light that I installed on my lunch break so you guys can see how the stock light looks at night which okay that's actually a little bit better right there so pointing it all the way down that's probably as far as it goes down because it's stopping right there and then uh you can obviously go pretty far with it but i like to do mine a little bit closer to me so i think that's kind of good that gives me a good distance to be able to see something and stop in time and another thing is i should change this display so it's black so you guys can see what's going on over here i'm pretty sure it's just not coming out over camera so let me switch that really quick all right so i got that switched over for you guys so now you guys should be able to see the display very clearly because it's a very nice display when you change it to black for nighttime looks gorgeous it's very minimalistic obviously there's nothing crazy crazy going on with it but the fact that it's in the frame is pretty cool with itself and i was just showing some people at work right before i left you know the touch screen and all that kind of stuff so they thought it was super cool i'm definitely still going to be working towards uh, messaging the company about seeing if we can get it to go a little faster but uh if we can't just know this bike does come with just doing 20 miles an hour i wanted to try to figure out if there's a way to get into the settings by myself like i started messing around with it turning it on holding the plus and minus at the same time turn it on holding the negative and the power at the same time or the plus and the power at the same time when it boots up nothing worked and i feel like it's their own software so there's nothing you can look up online to figure this stuff out so you're kind of just limited to whatever they offer you on the bike and they're the ones that do the firmware upgrades they get it sent to your app and then your app will update the bike all you have to do is turn the bike on like normal uh, turn on your phone look for bluetooth devices and the bike should show up in the app it's as simple as that and then once it finds your bike it connects and then you can turn the bike on change the ambient lighting you can do so much stuff your ride records um, you can check the battery health the bms on the battery how many times that you've recharged the battery like how many full charges like cycles it's done it's pretty cool all the stuff it can do in the app 
So definitely I would connect the app if you got one of these bikes. But anyways, what I was going with that point is that's how you do a firmware upgrade on this bike. The firmware upgrade is in the, the app itself and they will push it. Kind of like Super 73 does, they're gonna push the notification to you and then you update it using your phone. Pretty easy stuff to do, anyone can do it. I hear a train. I hope the train is passed. <laughs> we all know last time I was stuck behind a train, some guy came out of nowhere, scared the shit out of me, thought he was gonna rob me. Everyone's hauling ass and there's a train. You ain't going nowhere. I'm gonna get there before all you guys. Yeah, where are you going, Tesla? There's nowhere you can go. You just sped for no reason. Oh, the train's not that long at all. Cool. We're good to go. And real quick, when we get on this road, if you guys can hear me, is I want to show you this light compared to the aftermarket light so you guys can get a better idea at nighttime. There's really no street lights out here. So see how this stock light is? It's actually very good. I'm not complaining about it whatsoever. But if you spend 40 bucks, you can get a light like that simple enough you're gonna ride at night all the time on something like this i would still highly highly upgrade to a rechargeable um, light it already comes with the handlebar mount so that's just something i would do if i was you guys that's a weird spot to pull over buddy also another thing i wanted to say on this bike that i didn't say in my review and it's because i can't hear when i have my full face helmet on because it's not a very loud noise but they didn't put a, a silenced uh, cassette in the back so the gears they make a lot of noise it sounds like um if you had a high-end cassette on your bmx bike the ones that make a really loud uh, noise because you have the clicking gears in there that's exactly the sound i'm getting when i'm riding this bike without a helmet on i i'm wondering why they didn't go with like something silent so you wouldn't hear like anything in the back all you would literally probably hear is a slight motor noise and the tires it wasn't annoying to me it's just something i noticed like right off the bat when i got on the bike if you start pedaling, it gets rid of that noise, but when you stop pedaling, you can hear the chain, just the grind of the chain from the cassette in the rear. So just letting you guys know that, it's not a deal breaker, it's just something I noticed. All right, we're gonna take a little shortcut only because this bike isn't very fast to be on the road, so you are limited to kind of being in the bike lane. So uh, I like taking this way. When I have faster e-bikes, I definitely take more of the main roads and just stay in the streets. It's a lot safer. Um, stuff like this, I try to change my route when I go home to using a neighborhood to get to another street so I'm not on the busy streets. Because when you're on a bike lane with a busy street and you look behind you, traffic's just moving. And you need to get in the left lane for the turn lane. And yes, we can jump in the turn lane. But if you have traffic just going back and forth, you have to safely merge on, like in traffic to get into the turn lane. So sometimes it's really difficult when you got a bike that does this, you know, 20 miles an hour, everyone's doing 40. You're kind of screwed. I love fast e-bikes, trust me, like that's my thing. Like if I can make this thing do 60, that would be badass. Like I'm pretty sure I could. It would look ugly though, because everything's, you know, hidden in the frame and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna do that. So this is a sketchy street that I'm telling you guys about. All right, thank you. Thank you for noticing me. I appreciate it. Really appreciate it. I'm hoping this light turns red because if it does, that gives me an opportunity to get over to the left because cars are coming. I can already hear them coming. If I turn around, it's not going to help me out because they're all over here. So it means I'm going to have to come over here, use the crosswalk, and then, then I'll go across. Oh, dang. The seat is so high, I forgot. Way too high. I'm on my tippy toes. I almost fell right now. But uh, overall, this bike is fantastic. I'm glad you guys got to stick around for the video to see it at nighttime. This is exactly what I wanted to put in my review. I just did not have time to do like night recording. I put up some pictures on the screen on that review that I did for this bike, but it's just gorgeous. Like literally the light is bouncing like directly off of my my jeans and i don't know if you guys can see it by the gopro because i'm trying to focus and i'm sitting a little higher than i was earlier and there's traffic behind me so i'm trying to be safe right now let me get over and kind of show you all right so if you guys can see this 
Look at the light bouncing off of my legs. So sick. So, so sick. And the reason why I went green is because green was like the brightest color that I noticed on this bike. Blue looked awesome because it matched with the bike, but it wasn't as bright. Green just stood out to me. It looked lovely. So that's why it's green. I know it doesn't match the bike, but you know what's something that would be cool with a firmware update that I was thinking about a while ago is they should make it so you can put it on battery life. So right now it's green because my battery is good, right? Well, now that like we're, we're at 70% of the battery, it should, it should be like uh, green for like up to like 80% and then start turning like yellowish from like maybe 60 to 50% and then start going red around, I don't know, 25% and under. That would be super cool if they could integrate it into this bike and the firmware because then you can always just look down on your bike and not even look at the display and it will literally tell you how charged your bike is. Um, it's something like PC parts do, like my GPU on my computer. I can uh, modify the Celsius and all that kind of stuff on how hot it gets when I'm gaming. So I can tell exactly how hot my graphics card is without having all the stuff on the display. And I can see everything on um, the actual computer, which sits right next to my monitor. So I can literally look at my computer and be like, oh, dang, okay, the graphics card is like over 70C and it's, it's getting hot. So I think that'd be super cool if that's something they can integrate. They'll be watching these videos, so maybe they'll uh, take it in consideration. Maybe they can do it. I don't know. It really just depends on what they're limited to. That's kind of a far fetch. But I do feel like they should be able to add the ambient lighting, switching the colors and stuff like that on this display because you can only do it from your phone as of right now. Why is it wet? Dang. Super wet. I just wiped this bike down. I wanted to make sure it was shiny for my video because when me and my girl rode we went through the dirt we just blasted this thing man it was just covered in like mud and stuff had a blast though and it did very great seats great if you want a little bit more comfortable seat you can always go down to your bicycle shop and pick one of those up but i really don't have a problem with this seat but i would say that if you're going to be sitting on the bike riding it all the way until it's dead and maybe you're going to be sitting places like on the bike while you're not actually moving or you're doing a longer ride where you're not you know full throttle all the time so you're probably going to be on the bike for like 45 miles which i believe is what this bike does um you might want to switch out the seat but i don't have a problem with it i think they put a, a great seat on it and uh yeah so you guys can do what you guys want on that but seats are cheap they're like 30 40 bucks let's see if anyone hears my horn <laughs> i i don't like bells for horns but i will say that it's one of those easier ones you just literally just just slide it some of the other ones are like really finicky or they're really cheap and that bell is not that bad but let's go back to the stock light real quick turn this off i'm almost home so you guys can see the difference and uh appreciate you guys watching you guys are the true mvps of the channel and hopefully we have more content coming let me know if you guys are thinking about picking one of these up either for yourself or a family member or your daughter or your son just let me know Talk to you guys later. See you in the next one. Peace.